So here's what you get inside when you order some pub sinks. You get the um, little bag of nuts and bolts, these are just M5 um, nuts and bolts. You also get some thermal paste, uh, which is this stuff here. This goes in between the hub motor and the fins, um, just to get better um, conductivity. Then obviously you get the heat sinks itself. Um, that's the, obviously the flat edge that goes against the motor. You've got these fins, a little cutout for, to, you know, to get like a spanner in or whatever to do the bolts up. And you get six of these and they all kind of bolt together like that and go around the motor. What I found works quite well if you kind of bolt three of them together, or even four if you can, slide them over the motor and then just join the two halves together rather than kind of trying to get in between the spokes to do each bolt, which is quite fiddly. Um, so yeah, as I say, I get six of those. And then I've also ordered some ferrofluid, which is this um, magnetic kind of dark compound. Um, which helps uh, fill the gap between the stator and the rotor inside the motor so heat can transfer from the stator to the case and then out through these fins. Uh, this, you have to buy this extra, this doesn't normally come in the kit. Um, I got mine from the official HubSync store. It's quite expensive, it's about £20 just for this, um, was it 25mm tube or something? So yeah, bear that in mind, but let's get started fitting it. The first step was to clean both the surfaces with some rubbing alcohol. Next was applying the thermal paste and I had no idea how much to use so I went with better too much than not enough which as you can see was quite a lot. Step 3 was fitting them and I bolted four together in a set and fed them in between the spokes and around the hub first. I was careful not to scratch the spokes or try and get paste everywhere. Next I attached the last two together and bolted them on at the ends. This was the hardest part as it was actually really awkward to access the nut and the bolt with all of this in place and I needed an extra pair of hands to hold the sinks together and loosely put the nut on. My motor must have been on the small side as I had to tighten each bolt as much as possible and even then there was a small amount of movement because of the paste, although I think it will be fine because it still held in tight pretty well. Finally I used the caliper to get all the sections roughly spaced evenly to make things run smoothly. Before applying the ferrofluid, I prepared the surfaces by lightly sanding some rust and debris from the magnets as well as from the rim. This is the fluid itself which is very dark and it's kind of like a magnetic thermal paste that sticks to the magnets. I gave it a good shake just in case any of it separated and was then ready to put it in the motor. Once the cap is off, it only needs to be held 10mm or so from the magnets and it gets drawn out automatically. I had absolutely no idea how much to use so I applied just enough to fill the gaps between the magnets first of all. As you can see it spreads out by itself so precision isn't really needed. I've even seen people draw a hole in the cover and just squirt it in and it all seems to settle by itself. Sometimes much more came out than I expected but I ended up going around three times in total to build up a thickness of between half and one millimetres so the gap between the stator and the rotor will be completely filled. Better to apply too much than not enough I guess. In total I added 8.2mm leaving a tiny bit left just in case it needs topping up in the future. <coughs> On that note I hope this video was helpful if you're looking at modifying a motor in a similar way or at least interesting if you're just coming along for the ride. The next video will be on the first stages of registering the bike so make sure you subscribe for that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.